Hi, uh, good day to everybody. My name is Ari. Um, I'm from the uh, product marketing team of the Cloud Provider Software Business Unit at VMware. I'm really excited to join you on this webinar. Uh, today I will be supporting my um, esteemed colleagues from the Dell EMC family, uh, Colin and Mark, and we hope to take you through our new uh, data protection as a service offering for uh, cloud providers. So like I said, I'm, I'm part of the, uh, the product team in, in the Cloud Provider Software Business Unit, and we build a products and solutions exclusively focused for cloud providers. So think IBM, Rackspace, Expedia, CenturyLink, Navisite, Phoenix Snap, and, and really over, over 4,000 others. Um, so if you've heard of or are vaguely familiar with products such as the Cloud Provider Pod or B Cloud Director, that's that's the stuff coming from us. Um, so VMware's Cloud Provider Platform powers uh, what is perhaps the world's largest ecosystem of cloud providers, and uh, today is, is one of VMware's largest subscription business. So, you know, I, I've been in this team for about a year and nine months now, and you know, one of the one of the key reasons for uh, for my joining uh, this particular team was the overall enterprise pivot to the cloud. Um, yes, you know, we we all hear about um, the hyperscale providers running away with everything that's cloud native, but the majority of the world's businesses, you know, think the the global 2000 uh, companies and and everything around that they're still really navigating the world of hybrid. So um, everyone is, is firmly you know, entrenched in, in the world of on-prem IT today, and uh, for them, cloud movement doesn't start from cloud in, but from enterprise IT out. Um, and really, the, the, the cloud side of this hybrid story is getting more and more exciting each day. 2019 is actually going to be the first year where cloud spend overtakes enterprise IT spend for, for the first time. Um, so as, as more and more traditional workloads become uh, natively hybrid, there is a stark need for protecting these workloads that, that sort of straddle this on-prem, off-prem boundary. So that's, that's what today's, today's presentation will, will focus on. Um, you know, I don't want to be pre preaching to the experts here, but um, from an outside-in perspective, backup and data protection is, is one of the hottest trends in the market today. Um, we all know Dell EMC is doing fabulous, uh, but upstarts uh, such as you know, Rubrik and Cohesity, they too are, are doing quite well you know, with, with their lofty valuations and, and such. And really the key to justifying these expectations um, you know, for, for all of these companies, big and small, is really data consolidation in, in hybrid environments. Um, we've all heard that you know data is a new oil, data is a new water, data is a new bacon. So uh, any company that has control and um, command over data consolidation um, is able to justify those valuations today. Um, but if you're just an on-prem backup company today, or you know just a cloud-based backup company today, uh, one can say that you have less than half the story. And that's why we believe that Dell EMC's uh, data protection add-on to, to VMware cloud providers is, is a true winner because it captures uh, both sides of that hybrid story really well. Now, the key to growth for you know, all of our <laughs> VMware cloud provider partners is managed cloud. So you know, think managed private cloud, managed data, managed connectivity, and so on. So today, enterprise IT just wants to get, you know, offload their um, cloud complexity to someone else, which which really leads to this this enormous managed services space. And really, I mean, you, you can see on the chart here uh, to your right, um, the highest demand opportunity is in that data protection space, and it's it's enormous, really. I mean, overall, over in the billions of dollars, and and growing more than 20% year on year. There are not too many. Um, sub-segments of the cloud that have this volume and, and pace today. So how exactly do you know, cloud providers monetize data protection? So one can leverage data protection services to increase revenue significantly, we know that. 
Now, many of these services actually vary uh, quite vastly from provider to provider or even from contract to contract. Uh, but for most providers, uh, data protection services can be a nice extension of their IaaS or Colo product and are potentially low-hanging fruit. Now, many providers you know, will simply offer backups in their host environments as an add-on, while there will be some that will take over the on-premise side as well. Uh, it really depends on how far a provider wants to take it. With Dell EMC's data protection solution, one can do both. Um, so really, this, this backup as a service model can be taken you know, a few steps further in which the, the provider offers a full suite of data services, almost programmatically, including business continuity, disaster recovery, um, and so on. And this would look at more than just the technology and, and focus on you know, business resumption and, and continuity planning. So, how does you know, VMware fit into this cloud-based data protection story? Let me just build this out real quick. All right. So, so it really starts with you know, providing a, a cloud provider the ability to manage business-critical enterprise workloads. And the platform that makes it possible today for all of our cloud providers is, is VMware B Cloud Director. There are certain imperatives for a cloud provider looking to deliver you know, a best-in-class best hybrid experience. And one of them is that a cloud provider must have proven and robust multi-tenancy across clusters and stretch network, across, um, stretch network and, and stretch storage policies across sites to achieve you know, cloud availability and, and the economics of um, shared resource pooling. Today, most on-premises uh, VMware environments are based on you know, full software-defined data center capabilities, and it's, it is likewise important for cloud providers to have SDDC capabilities in their data center, but in an elastic, self-service cloud consumption model. And really, the cloud director makes all of this possible. Um, large cloud provider environments, we all know, often have geographically distributed enterprise customers. Uh, which necessitates them to provide self-service multi-site management and visibility. And really, any cloud management platform today needs to be open, extensible, and API-driven for you know, customized service integrations and workflows. And our, our flagship service for extensibility today is um, the Dell EMC Data Protection Solution. So a quick minute on you know, what, what customers really uh, want or need from, you know, uh, from, from a cloud provider from the data protection lens. So customers need to have SLAs with contingency planning, and, uh, which, is, which is firmly aligned with, with their cloud strategy and cloud business. Um, and that is really today centered around moving enterprise workloads to the cloud, so to creating seamless migrations, uh, a seamless hybrid path, um, and, and so on. This, now, now, what this means is that they will have to understand, you know, the cloud provider's um, security policies, um, data, uh, data safekeeping, privacy, IT policies, uh, governance practices, um, compliance, and so on. Um, and customers will need to examine their cloud data management impacts, um, their migration impacts, data growth impacts, application uh, re-architecture, and, and security as well. Um, so it's not easy, which is why not too many, there aren't too many um, you know, new, like brand new entrants into the space. We are seeing the market consolidate, um, and we believe that uh, the, uh, the Dell Tech family were, um, were, were in the leadership position already. Um, so you know, to, to, to sort of summarize, cloud data management you know, could mean that you know, the customers need to take actions on, um, you know, on data reduction, uh, to save costs, um, to offload, you know, seldom used data. All of this, like, really needs to be aligned to, to the customer's business goals, and, and we understand that. Now, the true north for both, you know, the, the Dell EMC team and the VMware team has always been, like, how do I make things simpler for cloud providers and their customers? So how do we make cloud provisioning, cloud consumption, um, cloud migration, extension, hybrid. How, how do we make all of these um, you know, one-click, simple, fast, um, and really accelerate time-to-value for both providers and customers? 
Um, integrating new services with the extensibility framework um, and you know, simplifying the consumption of services with, with an intuitive UI, um, that's really what makes the integration of the Delhi MC data protection platform on, on the cloud director um, really relevant to the cloud provider. So that's, that's pretty much it from, from my side as an introduction. I will keep tabs on if there are any questions, but uh, right now I will pass it on to Colin, resident expert on, on this jointly de uh, developed solution. So Colin, over to you. Okay, thanks, Ari. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to take you over a, a, an overview of uh, what we provide for uh, vCloud Director Data Protection, a little bit about the attributes and the use cases. Um, and then everything is going to gel together when, uh, when Mark uh, actually shows you a demo. So I'm going to try and leave as much time as possible for, uh, for Mark to take us through um, the user experience, the end user experience, as well as the uh, service provider cloud admin experience, uh, two separate uh, user experiences there um, that Mark is going to demo. So, you know, I think the uh, the main uh, the main competitive advantage of Dell EMC data protection is really the performance. So, you know, just a little bit about the solution. Um, we are providing infrastructure that and, and a turnkey solution, a turnkey plugin that allows you to mount a service uh, for your end users. Now, the infrastructure and the software can be delivered in a multitude of ways, depending on how you want to uh, how you want to consume that, uh, it can be completely software defined uh, using a data protection suite uh, and you know a virtual edition of our uh, data domain target storage, or it could be you know physical appliances uh, of the same or the integrated appliance, uh, which is known as the IDPA, integrated data protection appliance. Um, and all of these are, are supported with vCloud Director and allow you to mount this uh, backup as a service. Now, in all cases, um, you know, we, our, our solutions perform source-side deduplication. Um, we, this, this minimizes the amount of, uh, of network bandwidth that's required, uh, also uh, target storage that's required. And the deduplication technology that we have, uh, which is you know, largely uh, embedded inside of the data domain technology uh, is really industry leading. We're able to get deduplication rates that far exceed um, anybody else in the industry. And some of those numbers are, uh, are shown on the screen here. Um, these should not be taken as marketing hero numbers. Uh, these are either independently validated uh, by ESG or in the case of the, uh, the 55 to 1 dedupe ratio, that's actually the average that we see across our install base, which numbers in the thousands today. Uh, not just service provider install base, but, but also enterprise and, uh, and mid-market mid customers. Um, the last thing, you know, speaking to performance, that is an attribute of this solution is that it is a scale-out architecture. So um, a, single, a single Avamar server, that's the backup software that's used underneath the covers here, a single Avamar server can address an environment of 5,000 VMs, up to 5,000 VMs. Um, but you can, you can have a multitude of Avamar servers all tied to the same vCloud Director deployment um, and all managed by the same plugin. And we really make it sort of seamless um, you know, for you as a service provider, but also for your end users. They have no idea you know, what's, what's happening in the background. So at a high level, um, you know, the main reasons why we think you should be interested in, uh, in this integration and in this uh, backup as a service offering is really the seamless integration that we provide uh, into vCloud Director. So in terms of the tenant experience, the tenant accesses the vCloud Director tenant portal where they manage networks, they manage security, they provision new VMs, et cetera. And from that very same portal, um, they can access the data protection as a service. And Mark is going to take you through that in a, in a few minutes. Um, because of the deduplication that I touched on in, uh, on the past slide, um, we're also able to give you uh, 
you know, what in some cases we guarantee is the lowest cost protection uh, available on the market today. And that's really uh, due to the minimization of that network bandwidth, but I think most importantly, the minimization of, um, of target storage that's required to store your customers' backups. So we really reduce your costs, allowing you to be, uh, you know, very competitive when you go to your end customers. And then finally, performance and scale have always been uh, huge advantages for, uh, for Dell EMC. Uh, we can back up faster, we can back up more, do more within a single backup window, uh, and we do provide that scale-out architecture that I touched on. I keep pressing the space bar to move forward, but <laughs> I've got different controls here. So in terms of the architecture um, and the use cases of the um, vCloud Director Data Protection Extension, which underlies this, um, this backup as a service, um, it leverages, it, it, it gives you access to exactly the same multi-tenancy architecture that's built into uh, vCloud Director itself. So you have, uh, as a service provider, you manage a number of uh, organizations and those organizations can have a multitude of virtual data centers provisioned. Uh, so in this case shown here, we've got Ace Industry um, as, a, uh, as an organization. They manage two virtual data centers in two different uh, geographies there, Iowa and Ohio. And uh, within each virtual data center, they can have a, multi a multitude of VApps and now, you know, in more recent versions of vCloud Director, uh, standalone VMs. Um, and of course, the vApps can be made up of, uh, of multiple uh, virtual machines making up an application. Um, as a cloud admin, the use cases that, that you have access to are sort of what, what your responsibilities are um, in the way that we've laid this out is you define policy templates. So you, def you define, you know, what is a, a gold backup policy, what's a silver backup policy, what's a bronze, you can have as many policies, of course, as you want. And then you publish those to tenant catalogs. As you publish those policies to tenant catalogs um, and make them available to your tenants, you can configure um, various types of quotas to uh, limit their usage, or um, you can make those quotas non-enforced, in which case uh, there's simply warnings that come up when those quotas are, uh, are exceeded. So you can put a quota on gold. And um, for instance, uh, in a contract with, a, with an end customer, you could say you have one terabyte of gold, right, which allows them to protect up to one terabyte worth of VMs with that gold policy. Um, and there are some other quota mechanisms as well that, um, that Mark is going to show you very quickly in the, in the demo. Um, the next responsibility is really to decide where do backups land? So when Ace Industry takes a backup in their Iowa virtual data center, um, where, what target storage does that backup go to? Um, you know, I think in, in many cases, the ideal case is that the backup storage is co-located with the workloads. That leads to faster backups, faster restores, et cetera. Um, and, um, and, but perhaps you might also want to configure replication from Iowa to Ohio or Iowa to, you know, a different location that, uh, that you're managing as a service provider, and so you can do that as well. In terms of the tenant experience, uh, tenants are not so much managing backup, they're accessing backup as a service. So it's a, it's a pretty simple, easy to use um, uh, interface that they get access to. They will see a catalog of policies, you know, gold, silver, bronze as an example, and they're able to associate those policies to the vApps and the VMs that they have, which are you know, automatically discovered from vCloud Director. Um, they can perform in-place restores of those vApps and VMs, so they can pull up a list of all of the backup restore points that they have, um, subject to their retention policies that are defined in, in the backup policies, and they can choose any one of those backups and do an in-place restore, or they can do a redirected restore, which will create a copy of the vApp or the VM, um, and, and bring that up alongside the the original workload, which would still be running in that case. Uh, and they can also perform self-service file level recovery. And then, of course, they have the ability to uh, monitor the state of all of those backups, um, both the ones that are happening now, uh, as well as 
ones that happened in the past. And in the case of a failed backup or a failed restore, um, they're able to, you know, dig a little bit deeper and see some details as to why um, that backup failed. Perhaps they've exceeded a quota or, you know, something of that nature. So this is just um, giving you a preview of, Mark, of what Mark is going to show you uh, momentarily. So from the vCloud Director Tenant UI, uh, once a tenant has been onboarded or registered for data protection, they will see a new menu item show up in the hamburger menu uh, called data protection. And clicking on that menu item, uh, they would then go into the portion of the vCloud Director Tenant Portal UI, um, <clears throat> which, uh, which allows them to manage backup as a service. And I think I just skipped a slide. Go back. Nope. Okay. And this is just showing you um, the interface for uh, file level recovery. Uh, at this time, the file level recovery is not uh, fully integrated into the same uh, vCloud Director Tenant Portal UI. That's a roadmap item for us. Um, but the users can definitely uh, click on a VM, uh, access the file level recovery, um, and recover individual files without having to uh, um, create a new copy of the VM or, or reboot a VM. Uh, while the workload is running, they can, they can restore those individual files. And then finally, um, it's not only the UI that has been uh, integrated with vCloud Director, but also the REST API. So both as a service provider looking to automate, looking to uh, pull out data to report on it, um, or as a tenant who wants to uh, wants to automate, you know, the backup as a service, uh, do things from scripts or whatever, uh, they can access a single REST API endpoint, which is none other than the vCloud Director REST API. And we have uh, once once our software is installed, we simply extend that REST API uh, with new commands, new queries that become available. Uh, relevant to data protection. And absolutely everything that you can do through the UI uh, and even more uh, is available in the REST API um, because the plugin is developed in an API first fashion. So I'll just go over um, the pricing and, uh, and the packaging for, uh, for this backup as a service offering. So once again, um, you know, Data Protection Suite is the backup software uh, made up of Avamar and uh, a couple of other titles uh, related to uh, analytics and things like that. Uh, Data Protection Suite is optimized for virtual environments. It can provide application-consistent backup through uh, uh, various agents for SQL, for Oracle, for uh, SharePoint, um, and others, and file systems. Um, its real claim to fame in the market is uh, industry-leading backup time, network load, and uh, deduplication. And um, every backup is uh, a full backup because, of, um, uh, because the data domain will uh, stitch together um, incremental backups and create uh, a full backup so that when you recover, you know, it's a single-step recovery. Um, Combining Data Protection Suite and DDVE, uh, you know, you can get those performance advantages that I talked about earlier. So 55 to 1 dedupe on average. Of course, some customers uh, see a lot better than that. Um, I've heard uh, some, some pretty common stories of, of more like 98, 99 to 1. Um, but I've also seen customers that have different types of data uh, that are getting lower than 55 to 1. So this is going to depend on the nature of your data. Um, and similarly to reducing the network traffic and the backup times, um, those, you know, those numbers really depend a lot on um, the deduplication that we're able to, uh, to uh, achieve. And, uh, and finally, um, this solution provides uh, instant access for uh, VM recovery. So, the, uh, the, data, the backup as a service is available in uh, two different SKUs. Um, the first SKU is the backup software only, and that's less expensive. Um, 
that is for situations where, as a service provider, you might already own uh, data domain infrastructure, and so you would just combine, you know, combine this service with that data domain as the target storage. Um, so that's one possible use case for this SKU. Um, this will entitle you to um, Avamar Virtual Edition, Data Protection Central, Data Protection Advisor for Analytics, and Data Protection Search. Um, the second SKU is a little bit more expensive, but it includes software-defined uh, target storage uh, in the form of DDVE in addition to the backup software. And so this provides all the same titles and data domain virtual edition. Now in terms of pricing, um, this can be purchased uh, from VMware through uh, their VCPP uh, partner program. Um, the backup software only SKU it has a list price of uh, 8.87 points per protected VM per month. So it's a very simple uh, pricing scheme. It's uh, you know, irregardless of the, the size of the VMs that are being protected, uh, we will give you enough licensing on the back end uh, to, protect, um, to protect as many VMs as you want. So you simply report at the end of the month how many VMs are protected, and, um, and you get a bill from VMware through the VCP pro VCPP program, pardon me, uh, for you know the uh, the resulting amount. Uh, in terms of a list price to um, to a street price, uh, it's volume dependent. So depending on your level of commitment, you'll access different discounts. Um, discounts go up to 70%. So it gives you an idea of um, you know the types of, of prices that you would actually pay, and all of that is is documented in the uh, VCPP product usage guide. Uh, now the second SKU, which uh, combines Data Protection Suite with DDVE, uh, is uh, coming in at a list price of 2347 points per protected VM per month, and again with discounts up to 70% uh, depending on the volume. And I see a question, um, can you please reconfirm the pricing per VM using VCPP. Uh, yes, so um, so the pricing is charged on a per VM per month basis, right? So these point values are uh, for every VM that is protected. So just make sure that that's clear. Okay, so now it's uh, time for the demo. Um, Mark, are you uh, able to share your screen now? Hi, Colin. Thanks very much. I am currently sharing my screen. I'm just going to double check that you guys can see it. Can you see what I'm sharing? I do not see it, unfortunately. We're struggling with some technical difficulties. Just bear with us for uh, for one minute. Well, let me get. If that there are any questions, I will. Uh, I'll try to um, address them now. So I see one question on the chat. Please give an overview about application level backup. Can customer manage his application level backup from this extension? Yeah, that's a great question. So. Uh, we do have a couple of customers that are um, offering application level backup um, you know for their their customers that are leveraging VCD or that are uh, managed in the VCD environment. The integration is not what I would call a complete integration. Uh, what we allow you to do is uh, within the data protection extension uh, part of the VCD tenant portal UI, uh, you there's a tab where you can, as a service provider, configure, uh, external links, and um, you can provide a link, for instance, to the uh, um, the Avamar uh, repository, where you can make available the the plugin software that they need, or sorry, the agent software that they need for their applications, the the agents that you know that you support and that we support, um, and also the documentation, either Dell EMC documentation or you know, rebranded documentation, uh, you know, branded according to your brand, uh, 
and they can download all of that from that repository. Um, there's no actual integration into the quotas um, and the policies that you configure there. So you do need to work that out uh, separate from this, um, from this extension. The, um, the extension is really uh, very much focused today on image level backups and we are um, you know, investigating uh, how we can bring the agent level or agent based backups uh, with a closer integration into this, um, into this offering. Hello, thank you for joining. Today we're going to provide an overview of the Dell EMC vCloud Director Data Protection Extension. We're going to run through the use case of setting up an organization into our vCloud Data Protection Extension, applying policies so that that tenant user can deploy backups and run data protection inside of vCloud Director. So initially, as we log into our Data Protection Extension, you'll be brought to the home page, which gives you options of setting up all the different features that will be required to provide data prote protection to your organization. In this example, we're going to add a brand new organization that's been added to vCloud Director, but has not yet been registered inside of our data protection extension. We have the ability to, from directly inside of here, register this organization so that we can now provide additional data protection resources. This will run through a couple quick tasks of registering the organization and creating some of the hooks that we need for our data protection extension to supply that, those policies. Now that the organization has been registered, we have a green check. We can go ahead and configure our policies that need policy templates that we can then publish into this organization for use inside of their VDCs. So we go to our policy templates tab. And inside of here, we have options for catalog schedules, retentions, and advanced options. For this use case, we're going to start with just showing a retention and how we already have some base ones in here. We're going to add a new one for purpose of this demo. We give it a name and provide a description. And inside of here, we have multiple settings. We can select the number of days, weeks, months, or years, depending on the end user's requirements. We can also do more of an adaptive retention where we can keep different copies for different periods of time, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. For simplicity, we'll just keep this at 60 days, and we will go ahead and create that retention template. We see that we have one there now. We will go in and create a schedule to tell our tenant when their backups are going to be run. So we'll add a new one. Here we have options for daily, weekly, monthly, or on-demand only backups. You can select different time zones based on where your end users are gonna be located. We'll just select the daily backup, and let's run that at 7 p.m. You can run multiple scheduled times on a daily basis if you need more than one copy. For our instance, we're gonna run a 24-hour backup window, so we're only gonna run these once a day. You have the ability to limit how long each run goes. We're gonna give these a couple more hours just for the sake of completion, although all backups usually complete very, very quickly with this plugin. Once we've created our retention template and our schedule template, now we can create catalogs that can be published into the different VDCs. We select the retentions that we select, we created earlier, a new schedule, new retention, and we're going to leave our base option sets, which is blank at this point, doesn't have any additional advanced features. Once that's created, we now have a, a catalog template that we can deploy to our organizations and VDCs. So now I can go back to my organization that was registered earlier, DCorp. I 
can see the gold VDC that we it was created inside of vCloud Director. As you see, I have no repositories yet to land backups on, so I need to add one of those. So we will call this vCore repository. This is where you can allow quotas for how many megabytes are allowed each day into the repository and how many you can allow total overall into the repository. We want to enable these so that we can allow backups to go. In our instance, we're selecting this data domain virtual edition that is provided inside of our environment. We'll add that repository. See a couple tasks be created. And once this is available and active, we have a green check. Now we're able to write backups into this. So if we dig a little bit deeper into the repository, we get all those options we set from the megabytes allowed and allowed per day. Those can be modified on the fly. You can enable and disable directly from these screens. We also have the ability inside of here to create replication policies. So if you had a secondary data domain that you want to provide offsite copies to, you could configure that inside of here to allow replication of backups once they've been written to send to an offsite copy for disaster recovery purposes or secondary copies. Now inside of my gold VDC, I have a repository. Now I need to use those policies that I've created previously to allow this end user to be able to run backups. So inside of here, I have that base that we created, but here's our new one that we just added all of our options to. We'll select that. It shows the schedules and options that we created, and we can just give it a name. We'll call this Corp policy. Once that is added, we now have policies inside of here that the end users can use to supply backups. From a system administrator perspective, this tenant is now able to apply these policies and run them against their vApps and VMs inside of vCloud Director. These can all be looked at and modified if so needed from inside of this system administrator view where you can select different retention schedules or you can just look at the overall summary. If I would so choose, I can select this as the default policy for everything that's created inside of this VDC, which would be an overarching, overarching policy that will provide data protection for anything that's created. Inside of here, I can have multiple policies for different retention sets and different backup times, and then I can always select the default one so that I have protection against all, all resources that are created inside of my VDC. Thank you for joining. That concludes our system administrator view of providing data protection with the Dell EMC vCloud data protection extension. Now we're going to log in as if we were the end user, the tenant user into the vCloud director portal. So we can show how that those data protection policies can be consumed, backups can be run, and restores can be done. So here we're logging into the new HTML5 vCloud director interface as the vCorp admin for that organization. New to this edition of our data protection extension is the integration of our data protection policies directly into the tenant portal in vCloud Director. As you see in the drop down now, we have our data center, libraries, and administration. We have an additional data protection tab that is enabled by Dell EMC Data Protection Extension that allows the tenant to view their backups, run restores, and change policies according to different vApps and VMs inside of their data centers. We'll go there now, take a look, and see what we have. We have an initial dashboard that gives us kind of a view of what we're doing inside of our VDC. We have ad hoc quotas. These are the ability to run on-demand backups. These can be provisioned and set by the service provider for the end user to be able to run on-demand backups across their vApps and VMs. You can also look at a VDC overview that gives you a quick glance of what your protection policies are, what machines are, are protected by which policies, and then how much capacity you are currently using for the data protection of your VDC. We'll now switch over to the vApps view of looking at the different vApps that are running inside of this data center. We have a couple of vApps with two VMs inside of them. We have some that are ad hoc backup eligible so they can run on demand. That can also be disabled so that they can only run via the policies that were created in the previous videos. 
Inside of here, we have the options to manage policies. So if I wanted to select different policies for different VMs inside of a vApp, I can do that, or I can select the default, protect the entire vApp by my base policy, which we see here is the vCorp bold base policy, which will give me my seven day retention and backups run once a day at 8 p.m. I wanted to choose this and select VMs individually inside of the vApps. If I don't need to protect certain uh, certain VMs, I can unselect or select as many as I want, depending on what my protection needs are inside of this VM. Back inside of our VApps view, we are, we're now currently showing the backup windows. We can also look to a restore option. So any of the backups that are currently run, I can go in and look at the restore options inside of my vApps to restore individual VMs or entire vApps. Like I said before, these based on policy will run according to the schedules that were defined. For example, this one, if I wanted to run an on-demand backup to the entire vApp or individual VMs inside of them, I have the option of clicking and running a backup now. I can select all the VMs or select the individual one. For this demo, we'll just run one VM because this is a VM where we plan on doing maintenance or something else on. So we're going to run a backup now before we make any changes. You get a notification that the backup has started and is running. You can wait till the completion. You can do whatever maintenance tasks are required. And then you have an option to roll back to that VM if you needed to. Before we do a restore, we'll show the policy. So as a tenant user, I can look and see at these policies we created earlier inside of the data protection extension. We can look and see what those options are, how many VApps we're protecting, and things of that nature inside of here. We can dig in a little deeper, show some of the detail. So we can show how much quota is being used by each policy that we have inside of our EDC. We can look at the schedules so we can validate when they're scheduled to run, how long each one will run, and we can also check our retentions. Down at the bottom, we'll have some more details about what's protected and what's unprotected based on this, this policy that's inside of our VDC. We also have the ability in, this, in the newer versions of vCloud Director to run standalone VMs, which can also be protected via the same policies. So everything can be combined into one, so we have simple data protection across the entire stack. We have the ability to monitor jobs that are running. So we'll see the backup we had just kicked off is still running. Once that's completed, it'll show we can show it in our completed window and look for successful backups. We will see it inside of here so we know we're good to go ahead with our maintenance and then we can run our restores if needed. To show the restore options, we'll go back into this VM. We'll select show backups. This will show us all of the backups that have been run against this particular VM, um, how long till they expire and what size they are. We can go back say two days ago, select restore to a new VM. This gives us the ability to leave the existing VM in place and restore these job, restore these VMs so that we can do whatever is required from them. For the new VM restore, there's a couple, couple pieces of information you have to supply. You have to give it a, a new name for the VM because we're not overriding the existing one. Give it a description so that we know what it is. We can go ahead and select which backups we're going to restore. In this instance, this backup only backed up one VM of the VApp, so we will restore this UBU01. You have the ability to select the default leases that were on the original VM, so we will go ahead and do that at this point. If you were restoring multiple VMs, you could select a start order at this point to bring them up in the order that they are required to run whatever the VApp application is providing. Here we only have one, so we will just leave that at the default. You'll have the options to restore the networks of the original VMs, or you can leave them off so that you, you don't you end up with conflicts on the network. For our demo purposes, we'll go ahead and restore the network. It shows our, our network connections. We are going to unselect connected so that I don't end up with those MAC conflicts on my network. So I can restore this VM, log into it locally, and I won't be causing trouble with my production VMs. At that point, we're ready to finish, and we'll see that the restore will be kicked up. We get the, the started, and that will show up back in our vApps in data center. Once the restore is completed, we'll be able to log in to that Ubuntu server and do whatever we needed to do for the restore purposes. I appreciate your time. Hope you found this informative and thank you.
So with that, I think we'll conclude the webcast. Uh, thank you very much for joining us.